Hi, I'm Daniel Antman, Head of Market Development in the Pacific region for Standard & Poor's Rating Services. Today I'm pleased to be joined by Terry Chan, Managing Director and Criteria Officer for Asia Pacific, to talk about how Standard & Poor's factors in external support into its bank credit rating process. Terry, welcome. Since the beginning of the financial crisis a few years back, the topic of external support for the banks has been very topical. Can you tell us how Standard & Poor's looks at such support when it considers its bank credit rating process? Thank you, Dan. Um, per our principles of credit ratings, we look at issuer credit ratings from three aspects. Uh, first, credit worthiness before external support. Second, external support and third, notching analysis of specific instruments. In respect of banks and external support, we have actually four articles on this topic. Terry, which articles are you referring to? The articles are one, standalone credit profile, SACP, two, government-related entities, GRE, three, bank ratings methodology, and four, group rating methodology for banks. And all four articles can be found on our website, standardpoors.com. Can you explain to us what you mean by external support? External support is the support we expect a bank to receive either from its corporate group, uh, government or its guarantor. We distinguish such external support uh, into two, one ongoing and second extraordinary. And can you elaborate on what you mean by ongoing support? Ongoing support is the daily or the ordinary support a bank receives from its group or the government. For example, central banks extend liquidity facilities to commercial banks all the time. And we include such ongoing support into what we call standalone credit profiles. What about extraordinary support? Can you explain what this means as well? Extraordinary support refers to the support we expect a bank to receive in times of distress. And we've seen examples of this uh, from the US, UK and European governments having extended to banks in recent years. So how does Standard & Poor's assess the likelihood of external support from governments? We assess the likelihood um, in terms of two approaches. Uh, the first, for government-owned banks, is the government-related entities methodology. Uh, the second, for private sector banks, we use the government support framework included in our bank ratings methodology. Do you distinguish the likelihood of government support for the banks? Indeed we do. We categorise such likelihood into seven categories, uh, ranging from the highest, almost certain, to the lowest, low. What about group support? A similar approach is taken for group support in, in that we look uh, at the strategic importance of a bank subsidiary to its group and then assess again into five categories the likelihood of such support. And how does Standard & Poor's signal the degree of support? We signal such degree of support uh, in terms of the number of notches, rating notches, we add above the standalone credit profile on the bank to arrive at its issuer credit rating. Thank you, Terry. Thanks for joining us. That was Terry Chan, Managing Director and Criteria Officer, Asia Pacific, talking about how Standard & Poor's factors in external support into its bank credit rating process. Finally, I'd like to advise that there are a series of additional videos on the bank criteria which can also be viewed from Credit Matters TV, accessible from the standardandpause.com website. These include videos on the banking industry country risk assessment, the bank hybrid capital criteria and the bank methodology. I'm Daniel Antman from Standard & Poor's Market Development Group. Thank you for watching and good day.